Hello, welcome back to Level 1 News. We're doing this intro a second time. Today is June 22nd, and we're doing government and security news, not nonsense. We almost, because we do record these all at the same time, spoiler alert, and I was like, we could just start with Friday, but Krista couldn't accept it. No, I was like, that's <laughs> something about that's wrong. We, we do them all at the same time because people pay us to do them all at the same time on Patreon and Floatplane. Yeah, you can get this early if you're interested in that. Definitely the where you should be spending your dollars during these inflationary times. It's not like you're going to get more value out of it. <laughs> well, we got a little bit of good news. If possible, I like to front load the good news, right? <laughs> it's so rare that you get to say these, but this is a nice thing. However, I feel that every time that this is exercised, it will require another lawsuit. To yeah. Have. Victory. The court rules that the DMCA does not override First Amendment's anonymous speech protections. This is this is on the EFF, and this is a really interesting case because um, somebody on Twitter, their handle had money bags in it, uh, posted some pictures and said, "Wow, you know, this billionaire has a mistress or something like that." And the apparently some LLC bought the rights to those images to get them taken down, and then they issued DMCA takedown notices. Well, the court said okay, you, you've taken the images down, but you also want to discover the identity of the Twitter user who hasn't responded in the lawsuit. And uh, th they initially won, but then there was an appeal filed by Twitter that said, hey, you completely ignored the, this user's free speech rights. And the context of this image use was in, you know... Fair use. Criticism, yeah. which, which is fair use anyway. Um, and the court agreed, which is really interesting. The last Maybe time they really didn't like that guy. Well, the last time we had a billionaire get caught with compromising images with another woman turned out to be very true. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Jeff Bezos sort of doubled down on, on his side of that where, uh, you know, Jeff Bezos was like, I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to be blackmailed. Here's what happened. And it was, it's really interesting. You should go look at that because nobody talks about that anymore, but it was super, super interesting. Um, there's another aspect of this too, which is on YouTube, you know, we've gotten a couple of false copyright strikes or copyright takedowns and we were able to appeal it every time but you have to give up a lot of information when you appeal which includes you know like your your name and your physical address and your phone number and a whole bunch of stuff so some people have used that in swatting so we've covered cases where somebody was swatted and the information came from you know one of those and they didn't think anything of it when they were filing a counterclaim to say no this was fair use or, or whatever so it's interesting that this survived and it's interesting that the mechanism of YouTube doesn't contemplate anything like having a right like this that the EFF has. The lawyer who did that, who tried to use that in that way should be disbarred. Like at today, yesterday, whenever it happened. That's that, the only acceptable answer. There. That seems like that would go away. <laughs> Immediately, yeah. <laughs> And when it comes to using your billions of dollars to lean on leadership and the legal process, we got some who are very, very good at it. Eric Schmidt urges the U.S. to lean on TSMC and Samsung for chip security. What does that mean? Opening foundries here. They could be owned by Samsung or TSMC, argues Schmidt, but uh, they need to be on U.S. soil in order to uh, have U.S. interests remain secure. Aren't we already doing that? Like we've already put money aside for that? Well, it's interesting that you would say that, Krista, because uh. that is an excellent lead in. Because here's the thing. We do have some of these and they're in progress. But the people who created them, like, I don't know, Intel, they in these deals, they got major tax subsidies. They got sweetheart deals. And it was really, really good. But now the economy has changed and they wish to alter the deal further. <laughs> Intel delays Ohio plant groundbreaking and cites stalled federal legislation. <laughs> the guy from Intel was very expert. He's like, look, this is all on the federal side. We have nothing to do with this. They're not doing what they said they would. And then you dig into it a little deeper and it's like, wait, wait a minute. So the only way we can bring chip making to this country is if the government pays for it, mostly. I think is what they're trying to tell us. I mean, now, we, have, we have global foundries, but global foundries doesn't have the leadingest of leading edge processes. Now that Intel uh, fab, all the profits they were going to make from that, or at least 50% of those profits were going to go back into the treasury, right? Yeah. Oh no, no, they're not going to do that. Well, that's weird. So we give them money up front <laughs> and we don't get anything at all except well, national security. And they send, say national security is what they want from that. And they send all that money to Ireland. 
<laughs> it's funny because it's true. <laughs> and speaking of the UK, they have uh, come up with a solution to the whole cookie browser pop-up thing that we all hate so much. However, their solution is ancient technology that was already tried and no one respected. <laughs> UK wants to replace cookie pop-ups with browser-based opt-outs. So it's a cool idea in theory. You just go in Firefox or Chrome and say, hey, I don't want to accept any advertising cookies. And then your preferences are set globally. So when a website says, hey, can I have some cookies to advertise and track you? It just automatically no. knows that the answer is no. Remember um, Google did their AI thing for that? Yeah. And they said that if you clicked a couple of them off, it would learn and just assume that you never wanted that. Who would turn that on? <laughs> No, no one. one would turn that on. More importantly, why are these, some of these cookies blue? I think that's where the cookie was. And no, it was look, sprinkled with sugar. Look at the one to the right of it. Oh. Blue also, powder. they're kind of shaped like toilet seats. Kind of, <laughs> kind of a weird watermark. I don't know what's going on there. It is the same blue as the underlying table. Is that just ground up microplastics that they're pre-mixing mm. in the cookies? <laughs> And Germany has a couple of uh, big tech attacks coming this week. German watchdog launches Google Maps investigation. Does Google Maps do things to the competition in an unfair way? Or if you incorporate Google Maps into your product, does that preclude you from mixing it with other products? So like Google Maps API plus some other API, is that forbidden in the Google Maps terms of service? Spoiler yes, alert. It yeah. is. For sure it is. Is that anti-competitive? Probably, probably is. I wish someone would make a Google Maps that is as good as Google Maps, but I have not found one. Bing, Bing Maps is not. It's garbage. No. It's so garbage. It's the same as the search. It's just not as good. And when you do one big tech attack, you might as well do two, right? Why not? Apple is facing German antitrust probe into app tracking transparency. So this is really good. There's a lot of words in this article, but they didn't actually go over the, the first step the lawmakers did was they took, I think it was Apple Mail. And they just disassembled Apple Mail to say, hey, does this app have the the tracking stuff that they're making everybody else have? Because the Apple App Store, you have to have these extensions in your app, whether you use them or not, just to say, yes, I do this. and No, I don't do that. So they checked, does Apple's own apps have those extensions? And the answer was no. Oh. Hmm. So... The conclusion is that Apple's apps are exempt from tracking you. Now, it does go on to say that even if the Apple apps had that extension in the app, Apple still has the data and there's not really anything that Apple has said or done to say they're not going to use the data in that same way to do stuff. And in fact, Apple's ad sales have gone up. So they're sort of asking for an explanation there saying, hey, Apple's making a lot more money from ads now than they were before this change. That seems weird. This is also one of the rare anti big tech approaches you can take where you can still get lobby dollars from the other companies because everybody <laughs> hates Apple for this. Facebook will still flood you with money for going after Apple over this. The enemy of my enemy is my friend kind of a deal. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, remember Jack Ma? <laughs> oh, what happened to him? He was he toned down a bit. He got vocal. Uh, got, well, let's, well, that's, well, let's step further back in the timeline. He got mega rich from online payment platforms and other big tech uh, inventions. Then he got vocal. Then he went away for a while. And that sector cooled down in a big way. It was like it was a, a chilling effect when a billionaire just disappears. <laughs> but now, maybe, just maybe, the CCP is ready to let the, that sector spread its wings a little more. China's payments and fintech sectors to, quote unquote, play a bigger role in boosting the economy, President Xi says, in positive signal for big tech. So you read into this and you try to unpack it. I don't, was this, there's some weird stuff going on here, but my takeaway from this was that they're trying to structure this so that it can be more, more like user to user payments and more like micro loan things. Like say you were having a problem with your zero turn and it's like needed to borrow 500 bucks for a while. It's like I could micro transaction you or micro payment or whatever, 500 bucks to get your zero turn fixed. And it would be set up in the app and it would be tracked by the app and, you know, big brothers in on that. But things like that do actually help boost the economy and sort of keep things going in a way that, you know, like PayPal or somebody like that trying to insert themselves in the middle of those transactions and make percentage fees is, is uh, perhaps discouraged in this, in this from what I was reading. 
I think the thing you have to remember as an underlying thread to a lot of the stories we're going to talk about this week, especially the crypto stories, is central bank digital currencies, right? It's all about central bank digital currencies. This one seemed to be central bank tracking and anti-fraud, but they were more than happy to let individuals do things with their money. It sounded to me more like they were just trying to promote their own things so they could track people better. Yeah, yeah. well, that's where yeah. it starts, sure. Yeah. But ultimately, ultimately what's going to happen is one of those is going to go down. Right? Mm. One of those is going to bonance itself out of existence. <laughs> and then they're going to step in and be like, oh, that's unsafe. <laughs> which is exactly what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, speaking of control in yeah, China, that, that China's control is always right out there in your face. Like they put it there where you can observe it. And there's something about that that's like more terrifying, even though I guess it should be better. I don't know. <laughs> I don't like it either way. <laughs> the MIT Technology Review reports that China wants to censor online comments. A draft of the rules basically says that every comment that's going to be posted online has to be reviewed by a human. Here's the question. It, that's going to be a job, right? Yeah. I mean, AI will do some of it, but that's going to be a job. Would you rather be the CCP review every single thing that gets uploaded censor or the Facebook review what's been flagged as violent and sexual censor? Oh, the CCP. Yeah. The CCP is like playing Russian roulette with a million chamber gun, whereas it's like a four chamber gun with, yeah. the, with the Facebook thing. But if you screw up on the Facebook end, you might get fired. If you screw up on the CCP end, might be different. Uh, might be something a little worse. Might be something a little more unpleasant. Uh, I mean, you really, whatever that uh, Chinese character for bear is, oh, you're yeah. gonna have to zero in on that with like a like an eagle. See, yeah. as as horrifying as this is, I think this is learned behavior from the West, and like the the Western version of this is propose something so completely outrageous that makes everybody angry. So that when you propose something almost as egregious, people are like, well, it is a compromise. Well, here in the West, like hardly any news sites have comment sections anymore. They've all just removed mm -hmm. them because yeah. they didn't want to bother. Facebook and Twitter, right? Yeah. yeah. And those, so that's easily controlled. It's weird how that works. Yeah. Just a different way of getting there. Now, <laughs> Same destination. It was uh, pre-pandemic. What was it? Probably like 2019 when... China uh, decided no more bananas on live stream. Do you remember when that <laughs> oh, was? Oh, yeah. 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 And there was a uh, no more like underwear, no bananas. No hot tubs, I'm sure. There was a lot of that kind of stuff. And I think that shows that the CCP, like they understand that streaming is the new way that you reach out to people. Like their old way of controlling the media is failing, but they don't understand the culture at all. No. They can't get their head around it. And they're just like, what? How much do we have to ban? Why do you keep behaving abnormally? <laughs> China bans over 30 live streaming behaviors and requires qualifications to discuss law, finance, and medicine. Here's another thing where they're following up on the West. Now, of course, we don't have these laws. But if you read Twitter at any time and you question anything, the first response you're going to get is, you're not a scientist. You don't know. <laughs> you can't know these things. First of all, you don't know if I'm a scientist or not. <laughs> I have a science degree. Does that count? <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the number of things that here, and I, basically what they're saying is that you could run afoul of this doing anything. Yeah. And they, are you guys familiar with the, I, I think I actually did the story about it. Well, they're, they're like selling products. Yeah. And live streaming and super, China. super undisclosed. And uh, they're really looking the, to crack down. The yeah. live stream is just really an ad the whole way through. <laughs> Speaking of the note. <laughs> Another thing they don't like is showing wealth. They don't want you showing oh, wealth. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is like, what, what percentage of Instagram is just people trying to show wealth? Yeah, I mean, have. it is tacky, but is it, a, is it against the law to be tacky? <laughs> well, it is in China. And it's also against the law <laughs> to talk about a, a certain beloved character. <laughs> this, I mean, he has to know the lesson that he's feeding into this, right? The Barbara Streisand. Or is this just hubris was like, no, I can control it. I can control everything. Probably a little of both. NetEase shares drop after Diablo Immortal account makes a Winnie the Pooh post on the repo. This is a crazy, bizarre story that I don't, I think the headline is probably clickbait, but. Well, so there's two interpretations, neither of them particular, particularly incendiary. 
Um, oh, wait, where was the actual so quote? So Diablo Immortal was delayed probably because it's garbage. And that caused, that's what sparked all of this. So the Kotaku, which we can agree is probably not the correct translation, right? They, why why have why hasn't the bear stepped down? That one's kind of bad. But the the other translation is much less worse. What do you think about the bear? You shouldn't ever think about him. You should just worship him. That seems like a weird mistranslation. Now the second time that they angered them was to post something in Taiwan time. Ooh. <laughs> that seems calculated. Uh, yeah. But Blizzard historically has always kind of bowed down to china yeah why what would they gain from pissing them off you think that after they've restructured they're better now they're going to be better no i don't I don't think it was intentional i think that it was somebody on the forum that did it and then that's what drove it mm. down is because but ultimately diablo immortals delayed while they make changes and improve and make it run better on devices but really it's probably because diablo immortal is garbage and ccp was probably like well, there's not enough tracking here do we get more tracking? So doesn't China have much stricter rules about like some of the microtransaction stuff? Yeah. And the amount of time you can spend on it. Yeah. See also Pokemon Go. Well, crypto, it's maybe not the best time to have a crypto mining set up. <laughs> There's a lot of GPUs on eBay going for really good prices. Uh, I would say those are not gently used. <laughs> uh -uh. I think those are heavily used. But, I mean, if you're invested in it now, there's no reason to stop, right? Just keep it running, unless you're in Iran. Iran to cut power supply to licensed crypto miners, uh, according to State TV. 118 crypto mining operations are going to have zero power allocated to them during the peak month of July. So, so everyone, from June 22nd on. It seems like everyone in the Northern Hemisphere is dealing with a massive heat wave. Yeah. Yeah, and it is just not breaking. No, so. it's like, not. We haven't had rain in like two weeks. I've had to water my garden almost every night. Just like in RimWorld. It, uh, just, it just stays and stays and stays. It kills everything. And I'm going to get the blight next. It ruins your whole playthrough. So much, so many mental breaks. Eight without a table. <laughs> yeah. You know, I made this joke on the Twitch stream, but I almost dug up a corpse the other day. I got so hot. <laughs> I got so hot. And then I ate directly from the counter. And before I knew it, I was heading to the graveyard. Well, <laughs> just, so I got to dig up a corpse and Crazy. drag it to my house. Yeah. A lot of you aren't going to get that joke. <laughs> <laughs> Some weird game mechanics in the game room world. Uh, now, this is what I was talking about before. Because what's the answer to all this that they don't speak of? What would solve all these problems? Central bank digital currency. <laughs> That's what would solve it. Cryptocurrency tech is vulnerable to tampering, a DARPA analysis finds. But then you dig into this, and, it, and it's really an analysis of Bitcoin in its very early days. And it said that, hey, uh, it was more um, able to be controlled by a central authority or group of central figures than anybody else has alluded to. So it, it turned out it's the 51%. So like 51, if you get more than half of the nodes to agree to something, then you can change it. You can do stuff. And so this is a paper that showed that, yeah, uh, it turns out that 51% of the network has been controlled at times by a very small, relatively small number of nodes. Well, there's probably some truth to it. Yeah, but that's it, not an unknown threat. But the alternative of central bank digital currencies, and they did not actually suggest that. I'm reading between the lines here. But that's way more controlled, right? Mm. And way more controlled by people I already don't trust. In fact, distrust heavily. <laughs> they have shown themselves not to be trustworthy at multiple occasions in the past. As have several federal agencies. I would count this one among them, but they're probably not wrong about this. Yeah, even a broken clock is right twice a day. <laughs> I, would, I would not use this service. <laughs> FBI says that fraud on LinkedIn is a quote-unquote significant threat to the platform and consumers. <laughs> what news channel told you to delete your LinkedIn first? <laughs> this one. This is nothing new, but they're just saying that, you know, people can get on there and get these fake... Uh, identities that look real and have a lot of connections. Because a lot of people on LinkedIn are just like, yeah, I had everybody. Yeah, oh, look you, at me. oh, I might need to network this oh, later. Yeah. Yeah. I'm such a, I don't even think they want to network later. I think they just want you to think yeah. that they're networking. Mm -hmm. 100%. Level. And, uh, you know, one of those people hits you up. And, and it's funny because they talk about how they don't just come right out like most spammers. And they're like, oh, hey, you should do this. They're just like, oh, yeah, I'm really good at business. I'm amazing. You want some tips? And very slowly, they ease you into the crypto fraud. I'm so good at business. Yeah. That's how they start the conversation. Well, they show you their pictures or their properties and I'm so rich and oh, maybe I got a job opportunity for you. And then before you know it, 
They're selling you Dogecoin out of the mm -hmm. back of their car. And uh, it's, it's usually these common household appliances that we fear are spying on us. But no, it can be infrastructure in your home. <laughs> Security flaws in internet connected hot tubs exposed owner's personal data. Well, that's your, your name and your email address. It turns out the app that you log into on your phone to turn your hot tub on remotely because you've had a really hard day, not super secure. Probably not going to kill you, but it is going to leak your personal info. How many hard days do you think people who own that hot tub have? <laughs> <laughs> One that's not built enough. into the pavement, yeah. <laughs> I guess recently they could have lost a lot of crypto at yeah. a hard day. You can mess with the uh, temperature and turn the jets on and stuff, but the most that could do is cost you energy costs. Yeah, They, they talk about the chemicals are all added by hand, so... No one's going to be chemical burned by this, hopefully. I uh, I just don't understand, like, why you would ever want that, like, internet-connected hot tub. I guess just, well, oh, on your way home, you can turn on the jets, but it's like, why bother? Or on your way from the West Wing, mm. which is a 15-minute walk. Again, look at that hot Well, yeah, tub. but you have a butler who carries you <laughs> to the hot well, tub. But in these hard financial times, after the crypto crash, you've got to let him go. Oh. Why would you need an app? Yeah, you just call Gary and tell him to get ready the hot tub. <laughs> Here, ready the hot tub and put rose petals on the I was pad. about to say, he needs rose petals, too. Go to the West Garden and cut some fresh roses for my hot tub. I'll be taking my afternoon tea in the hot tub in the rose garden. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> the number of countries that are coming out and being very aggressively anti-VPN. We've got China. We've always had China. we got Russia now. we got India. Uh, we have a couple of those uh, South Asian countries yeah. get in on that. And so VPN companies have to be more and more aware of if they just change the law tomorrow, how do I protect my customers? And this one, Mulvad, Mulvad has identified one vector that could leak your data. Mulvad VPN axes recurring subscriptions in the name of privacy. The move comes as a way to be able to store less users' data. Basically, you just show up, you pay, you get a token, and then the token is good for a fixed time interval, and they don't know anything about you, and they don't have to really maintain a transaction history for very much beyond the time the transaction occurred. So you, it's so cheap, you just buy it a year at a time, or two, or five, or whatever. That's uh, It's surprising to me that they would do something like that, because usually they want that reoccurring subscription, so that way you just don't think about it. Oh, well, they got to build trust, though. Yeah. Or maybe that's a, a decent VPN company. I remember back when private internet access was trustable. I don't think they're anymore, right? Didn't they get I don't know. The, it's a, the, the com engagement challenge. Who's trustworthy these days? Who can we take money from? Nobody. But, uh, <laughs> you could get a gift card from almost anywhere. Yeah. And trade that gift card anonymously for private internet access time. And it worked exactly like this. Mm -hmm. So you just get a string of numbers as you log in, set a password, and... When that's over, come back with another gift card. You'll never use that account again. It's glorious. How much unused VPN time gets caught up in those accounts, though? That's got to be a ton. <laughs> that's how they make money. Yeah. yeah. Even if you structure the business to break even on paper, you will still make a crazy amount of profit. That's how those gift card companies are. Or the like the rebate. It's like the mail-in rebate thing for like computer components. That used to be a thing. Like you, you would buy computer components and everything had a mail in rebate because nobody would do that. Even a $20 mail in rebate, you would only end up paying out like $9 as a, that, that was like a worst case scenario rate. I bet rebate use has shot up recently. Yeah. Uh, yeah sure I'm has. looking into coupons these days. <laughs> yeah. Got to buy what's on sale. You got to get that advertiser. Uh, how do you get those? Mine just show up in the mail. I use them for compost. I get some, but not. You can see them course. online too if you go to like the grocery store website. It'll be like deals this week. But then you got to go through all that. Like I don't have a printer, and man. you need to set up a throwaway email but account. And with the uh, with Kroger stuff, you can put load them onto your card. Yeah, I know. But then you got to go through the app, and it is it is annoying. It's, it's There's no easy way to coupon. It's a miserable process. I think we just figured out why, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we should build an AI. <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know some of those ladies who came in with the giant coupon books like yeah, that well, was that's, their second uh, job wasn't that honey yeah well and yeah. then someone who comes by and gives you a billion dollars yeah we'll do that i'd give it i'll take that save some money for a while and then get a billion dollars 
Well, this story, I mean, this is nothing new, but I feel like they have to march this out every, like once a week. Yeah. Just to try to keep us hyped for it. Because boy, is the hype train derailing on this thing. <laughs> Russia launched cyber espionage campaigns against uh, Ukraine allies, according to Microsoft. They uh, they didn't mention the uh, the uh, satellite, Viasat. It's like cyber espionage campaigns against, yeah, Viasat is not a Ukrainian company. Why, why how did you, why, why? Well, I think they're saying these are new attacks. Yeah, it's like, more than just Viasat, and it's ongoing. But Viasat was very damaging. I think the hype train has gotten up a little bit this last week. Yeah? There were some uh, threats against Lithuania, I think. But and when I say the hype train, I'm talking about our weariness of this war. Uh, and our willingness to keep pouring money onto the fire. I think our lawmakers are probably still willing to keep pouring money onto it. But at some point, the people's will... You know, you have to try to keep that going. As everyone is suffering now. It's like, oh. Yeah, war fatigue is a big deal. Once the populace loses taste for war, it's a lot harder to keep it going. And we are paying for it. It's like it. eating without a table. <laughs> We're all going to start digging up doors if this <laughs> war keeps going on. Uh, moving on to, uh, to security, we have uh, a new kind of Android spyware. Google is notifying Android users targeted by hermit government-grade spyware. Victims in Kazakhstan and Italy, mainly. I think they believe this is of Italian source. This is, it's as effective as the Pegasus spy, spyware from the uh, NSO group. But, uh, hey, at least Google is you know sort of noticing some, some flies in the ointment, a la Apple, with their architecture and, and app management thing. It's still just phishing, though. Man, it's like... We the world just is never going to figure that out, right? The temptation to click those links is overwhelming for some people. Yeah, you think it's you think that's what it is, or they just don't understand? Mm, probably a little column A, a little column yeah. B. Do you think it, there's ever, there's got to be somebody who looks at it and they're like, mm, "That's probably fake." But what if I there, gotta click on it anyway? What if there are milfs in my area? <laughs> what if they do want to chat? Uh, what if this is a free server on the curb? <laughs> well, it came from my friend's email. It has to be real. <laughs> She's never talked about this IRL, but. Have you guys been uh, observing Kim.com's Twitter lately? <laughs> he's gone. But I, I don't know if he's necessarily wrong, but he is just outlining everything that's wrong with the U.S. economy. And, you know, r rolling out some, some facts that nobody wants out there and saying that the economy is on its way to collapsing. <laughs> so I wonder if maybe somebody in the Condé Nast universe was assigned an, a, a, an assignment to say, hey, we need to, we need to control Kim.com a little bit. Why don't you go trash his service? Ars Technica reports that Mega says that it can't decrypt your files. This new proof of concept exploit shows otherwise. Well, the proof of concept, concept exploit shows that they probably could if they want to, but it's still a huge pain in the butt for Mega if they want to do it. I think the fear here is that we know that Mega could be seized at any time. Yeah. Where did he end up with his trial? Uh, I think he's going to be extradited, especially if the Assange thing is any indication. It's He's just on his last appeal or whatever. It started with X. I thought you were going to say executed. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, if they could. Yeah. But yeah, well, so what they're saying here is that the encryption on Mega, it is built the way he describes, but it's just not great. So technically they could look at your files if they really wanted to. They need you to log in a bunch of times and to capture all those sessions, and then that makes it easier to recover your key. But if they seized it and we didn't know, I mean, I think he would tell us, but he might not be in a position to tell us. Then they could. We've seen the FBI has run child pornography rings to catch people's logins. Yeah. They will happily run Mega for a couple of years <laughs> to decrypt it. I still have a lot of questions about that. And maybe if you want super security. You just store all your valuable information in PDFs, right? <laughs> Adobe Acrobat may block antivirus tools from monitoring PDF files. So this is Acrobat is the way that a lot of antivirus products work is they do DLL injection. And a lot of the time antivirus companies get DLL injection wrong and they'll make the, a program unstable. And so Adobe is blocking that because they feel like that oh, a lot of the, the awfulness of, you know, everybody's experience using PDFs is because of that. But in reality, dealing with PDFs is just awful because of Adobe, not because of the antivirus products. But um, yeah, Adobe is not allowing virus 
uh, scanners to scan inside of its application, which is seems a little problematic. If you want, if you approach Adobe and you're like, hey, Adobe, I can't use antivirus software because of your stupid files. What should I do? Of course, they they tell you to hack your registry <laughs> and make sure that their files are not touched. That's the solution. We need an alternative to PDFs yeah. that people will actually use. That would be great. This is not the first time we've seen this. However, this is a new company and they have a new way of operating their fitness app that makes it even more useful because just like Pokemon Go, you can fake the GPS data and do whatever you want. It's like they didn't think of that. Shadowy Strava users spy on Israeli military with fake routes based in bases. So basically, this is a real app, but malicious users can see data to the app like as if they're on a military base to see other people that are running on the military base, which like, leaks information. You create kind of like, I want to see how I stand up against other people in my area. Yeah. And my area just happens to be this air base in Israel. <laughs> <laughs> so then you can see other people running there, which, you know, military people, yeah. fitness, they're probably running. And you're like, oh. And then they were able to compare that to the same user at other military bases and confirm that that person was probably involved. How about just no fitness trackers for the military? I mean, how hard is that? Yeah. It's amazing that they allow that, but. They probably don't realize. It's like, oh, it turns out your smartwatch is constantly logging your GPS position every three seconds. Yeah. Oops. I guess they'd realize. have to ban phones and stuff too, but. Yeah. They do in some places. Yeah. Well, that would hurt recruitment. Yeah. Well, you got to give up your smartphone. They do that as a punishment, I've been told. <laughs> Wendell, imagine if you got drafted and you, you got to give up your smartphone. Here's your government issue Black Bear. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you know what? We've seen a lot of uh, softening from Microsoft lately. Like they seem to be giving up on a lot of things that people hated. I think they're really trying to turn their image around for some reason. I don't know what they're leading up to here. Microsoft plans to eliminate face analysis tools and push for quote unquote responsible AI. Oh man, I can't wait for the AI story in the nonsense section. It's amazing. Maybe Microsoft is like, you know what? Our AI face tools are garbage. Let's just <laughs> PR this. Let's put a bullet in this, put out a press release. The article focuses mainly on like trying to discern somebody's emotional state. And it, it, you know, you imagine scenarios like a job interview. It's like, what was the person's emotional state when they were interviewing, you know, to work at Funco? And it's like, mm, they seemed slightly despondent. It's like, well, that application is rejected. What, what if you're like one of the three of us and like, you're just dead inside and you don't like display human emotions very well. You oh, just, I, yeah. I display plenty of emotions when I drive. Uh, <laughs> but they're mostly angry ones. The AI would flag that as bad emotion. Yeah, it'd probably like pull me off the side of the road and say, no, you have to cool down. Ooh. You have to relax. That would just make me more angry. <laughs> this is not a shocking headline, but you know, just it's interesting to, to see the numbers, see the milestones as we go forward into having no security at all. There are 24.6 billion pairs of credentials for sale on the dark web. I wonder how many duplicates there are. Mm. Yeah, that probably does include a lot of duplicates. Remove duplicates. Are we counting duplicates as the same person using the same password for multiple services? Yeah. I don't think those should count as duplicates. And uh, Apple, this I think this is going to be a European antitrust investigation because <laughs> it does, changes the experience. It gives you an advantage just because of who you use for an operating system. iOS 16 will let iPhone users bypass captures in supported apps and websites. Now, five years ago, Google was saying, how do we link somebody's mobile identity to their desktop identity for the purpose of advertising? And even Google was scared to death to really, really dial that in. Although they, they did eventually create the, the Android account and you have to sign into Google to get, you know, your Google account on your Android to get the most use out of your applications. And so here's Apple basically doing the same thing. And all of a sudden it's like, oh yes, your desktop browsing experience and your mobile browsing experience, they're linked together. So you can, you, you know, hold your phone up and use it to log in, use it for the two factor, use it for whatever. And all of a sudden, the hugely valuable thing there is your mobile identity is linked to your desktop identity or all of your other computers, not just your desktop computer, because everybody's got a tablet and a phone 
and a desktop computer and probably a work computer and another computer and having all of those linked together for one single advertising ID. It's the Holy Grail. You want to get angry today? Uh, by the way, if you guys don't know, there's links to all these news stories. There's a one tab in the, or, no, that's in the, yeah, yeah, there's a it's one tab. It's always in the so, description, yeah. So you can get, you can actually go to all these websites we gave you. So you can check out uh, MacRumors.com, read that story. And I would just suggest that you go to the comment section if you want to hate humanity. Because people are like, wow, that's great. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm going to love this. Oh, everybody's going to be jealous because we're Apple. And we're perfect. <laughs> and we really one, high on their own farts. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. We weep for humanity. <laughs> oh, sleeping on this sacrificial altar is so comfy. <laughs> Don't you wish you could be here? I love seeing ads at all hours all the time. Inside of my eyelids. The bloodletting is fine. I'm cold all the time, but I'm safe. I love how over the top their CGI press events have gotten to. Like the, the the one guy that opened the wrong door. That's like the hidden the hallway of hidden doors, and it's like oh wrong door. And then it, just the memes from that have been amazing. And our final security story has to do with supply chain, and this is maybe the most terrifying of all of our security failures because there's nothing you personally can do to protect yourself against it. Credentials for thousands of open source projects free for the taking. Once again, leaker credentials can be used in massive supply chain attacks. Yep, they will be. Rip. And somebody else's mistake is going to be leading to your suffering because you don't, it's impossible for you to know when you choose an app, how much supply chain risk, how many libraries are lurking in that app. And there's no way for you to find out. So you just have to risk it. Roll the dice. I mean, you probably could figure it out if you're really determined, but we haven't built the tools to audit those things yet. Easily. It's not like we have, you know, had smartphones and apps for how many years now? <laughs> but everything in the Apple App Store is safe, Krista. I don't think that's true. <laughs> well, it's safe right now. How fast can Apple fix it if somebody supply chain attacks it? Not super fast. Oh. So it's not going to be safe. What do we got for tomorrow? Business and uh, social. What? We'll see you guys then.